Hello, good morning. And uh, today we are going to solve winter 2011-11. This is an MCQ paper. So let's start. Hope you all are good. Uh, the first question is on your screen. He says the diameter and the length of a thin wire, approximately one meter in length, are measured as accurately as possible. What are the best instruments to use for diameter and for length? You know, this is one meter uh, long uh, wire and the wire is very flexible. So it's better to use a rule. And for the diameter of the wire, we always use micrometer. So I think the option A is the best option for diameter. Use micrometer for the length, use rule. Okay, let's move to question number two. Now the question number two is on your screen. A quantity is quoted as as having uh, having a value of 6.2 millisecond. In what units is it measured? Meters, meters per second, and uh, microseconds or milliseconds. The small m stands for the milli. So the D is the option, milliseconds. Question number three. Question number three is on your screen. The graph shows part of a journey made by a cyclist. How far did the cyclist travel in seven seconds? <clears throat> okay, now you see it's a speed time graph. And if you want to find out the find out the distance traveled in the speed time graph, we can find the distance traveled by calculating the area under the graph. And here you can see the graph is in this shape. So I will divide it into two portions. This portion will be a rectangle and this portion will be a trapezium. And I will find the area of this portion. I will find the area of this trapezium. I will add them up and that will give me the total area under the speed time graph. And that is equals to the distance traveled. So for the first portion, if I draw a imaginary line here, if you draw a line here, this will be a rectangle. Its length will be five and its height will be four. So if you multiply the area of the rectangle is length into where to four into five, that will be 20. And then this portion, it will be a trapezium. So this and this line will be uh, parallel to each other. The area of the trapezium is one by two into height, height from five to seven, if the height is two and the sum of parallel side, one parallel side will be of four and the other parallel side will be of six. So the answer, 1 by 2 into 2 into 4 plus 6, bracket close. And the cal if you do the calculation, the answer will be 10. So the rectangle is area is 20, and the area of the, <clears throat> the trapezium is 10. If you add them 10 plus 20, it will be 30. So the choice will be <clears throat> B, sorry. <clears throat> the propeller on a boat pushes water backward with the force of 2000 Newton, the board moves through a, the water against a total resistive force of 1800 Newton. The diagram is given. According to Newton's third law, what is the forward force on the propeller due to the water? The force 2000 Newton was applied by propeller on the water. So the water will apply the same amount of force <clears throat> on the propeller but in opposite direction. So C is the choice, uh, 2000 Newton. So question number four, the choice is C. Next question is question number five on your screen. Uh, let me reduce its size a little bit. Okay, now it's better. It says the diagram shows a, a parachutist in four positions after she jumps from a high balloon. At which position does she have terminal velocity? Whenever you have terminal velocity, the upward and the downward force are equal. The resultant force is zero. Because the resultant force is zero, the acceleration is also zero. And the body drops or moves with the constant speed. So <clears throat> the four options given, wherever the acceleration is zero, in that position, the body is moving with the terminal velocity. So in the C option, you can see he says that not accelerating. So it's not, uh, so its acceleration is zero. So in the C option, the body is moving with the terminal velocity. 
So the choice is C. And the next question on your screen is question number six. An engine pulls a truck at constant speed on a level track. A link between the truck and the engine breaks. The driving force on the engine remains constant. What effect does this have on the truck and the engine? Because when the link will break, the driving force is in the engine. So when the link breaks, the engine has the same driving force, but now the load has reduced. So the engine, the engine will uh, speed up because its mass has reduced because no more truck is behind it. Uh, so the engine is supposed to speed up, but the truck, the driving force on the truck has uh, disappeared because the link has broken with the engine. So that the truck will start slowing down. So the truck will be slowing down and the engine will speed up. The question number six, the option uh, is B. Next question, question number seven on your screen. Sorry. Question number seven. A weight of a stone is found using a Newton meter and its mass is found using a pan balance. The experiment is carried out on the earth and on the moon. For each meter, is it read is, is its reading the same or different on the earth and on the moon? The reading on the Newton meter, the reading of the Newton meter depends upon the force of gravity wherever you're taking <coughs> that reading. So when you go on the moon, the, the force of gravity will be different on the moon. So the reading on the Newton meter will be different. But the pan balance reading do not depend upon the location. So the whatever the pan balance reading is here on the Earth, the same reading will be on the moon. So the pan balance reading will remain the same and the Newton meter reading will be different. So the best option looks uh, <clears throat> B. Question number seven, B option. Now you on your screen, you can see question number question number eight. And the question, let me increase the size. No. Question number eight. Uh, the extension of a spring is measured as weights are added. The graph shows the results. Which point is the spring's limit of proportionality? You know, it's an extension load, extension weight graph. And the point on the extension load graph after which the graph is no more a straight line, it starts curving upward. Uh, that point is known as limit of proportionality. On your diagram, the figure, you see this point B. This point B is the limit of proportionality. And so the B is the option. Question number nine on your screen. The metal cone with a circular base is placed on a flat surface. The stability of the cone depends upon. The stability of an object depends upon how wide its space area. Plus, it also depends upon the height of the center of the mass. Lower the height of the center of the mass, the more uh, stable that body will be. If the options are its weight only, no. If the diameter of its base and the position of its center of mass, yes, that's the answer. The diameter of its base only, no. The position of its center of mass only, no. So it looks, question number nine, the answer is B. <clears throat> the base area and the center of mass. Now the next question. <clears throat> Sorry. The efficiency of an electric generator is 65%. The efficiency of a generator is 65%. The energy input to the generator is 12 kilojoules. What is the useful energy output? So 65% efficiency means that only 65% will be useful output energy. So the total input is 12 kilojoules. Find it 65%. So I have the calculator. So let's do uh 65 multiplied 12 divided by 100 so 7.8 7.8 kilojoules so the choice is c question number 10 the choice is c 65 percent of 12 kilojoules i just found it by on my calculator so next question question number 11 on your screen <coughs> mm. a coal is burned as fuel to heat water in a boiler producing steam. The steam drives a turbine which is connected to an electric generator. In which order do the major energy transformation takes place? So you see the boiler in which the fuel is burning, 
the fuel has the chemical potential energy that is converted into heat energy then it is converted into the kinetic energy and then the kinetic energy is converted into the electric energy so i believe the choice is b chemical potential energy converted into heat energy that is converted into the kinetic energy and that is converted into the electrical energy so the choice is b yeah okay now question number 12 question number 12 on your screen a crane moves its load diagonally as shown by which distance is the weight of the load multiplied to calculate the change in the gravitational potential energy of the load um the gravitational potential energy or change in gravitational potential energy can be calculated by two formula one is change in potential energy is equals to mgh and the other formula is mg stands for the weight so the other formula is potential energy is equals to weight into height so his question is with which height i should move Uh, i should multiply sorry this load moved diagonally in this way and reached here but when you will calculating the uh, change in the potential energy we will always use how much vertical height it has gained we all always interested in the vertical height the its level was here then now it's here so the gain in the vertical height is b so the gain in the potential or change in the potential energy will be weight multiply b so the option is b question number 12 the option is b question number 13 on your screen okay <clears throat> he says question says the diagram shows two identical pieces of apparatus one is filled with water and the other is filled with mercury water is less dense than the mercury at which point is the liquid pressure greatest the greatest pressure is in in a in a vessel uh, of liquid the pressure depends upon two things density and the depth of the liquid above that point so the pressure will be greatest in the mercury where the depth of the mercury is the greatest so the points he has pointed there i think the d e should be the answer because mercury has larger dense and uh, more density than the water and the level of the mercury here the depth of the mercury above that point is greater so point d will have the greatest pressure question number 13 uh, d is the answer question number 14 uh, and <clears throat> objects with different weights are placed on a grid horizontal surface which row shows the correct pressure acting on the surface the weight is given area of the contact is given objects with different weights are placed on a rigid horizontal surface which shows the correct pressure acting on the surface so the pressure we can find by the formula of weight divided by the contact area so let's check use your calculator uh, let's check for the first one and that is saying that the weight is this and the area is this weight is 10 Contact area zero point five zero point one sorry ten divided by zero point one so the answer is hundred the first is wrong the second twenty divided by zero point two uh, the answer is hundred so the answer given in the options is also wrong so next is thirty divided by point one and the answer is three hundred this is the correct option and so it means the C is the right option. weight divided by contact area so weight divided by contact area we did this calculation and we found that the c is the right is the answer question was which one is giving the correct pressure so c is the right option question number 15 how does heat question number 15 on your screen uh, how does heat transfer through a vacuum take place through the vacuum the conduction cannot play take place the convection cannot take place they both require medium through the vacuum only the only way the heat can be transferred is radiation so radiation only so the i think the question number 15 the d is the option radiation only <clears throat> question number 16 on your screen which row explains why a liquid has a fixed volume but does not have a fixed shape you know the liquids have fixed volume but they don't have fixed 
uh, shape. The reason is because the force between the molecules is large, and uh, that's why they have fixed volume. But they are allowed to move throughout the liquid. That's why they don't uh, have uh, fixed shape. They they require the shape of the uh, vessel in which you put the liquid. So I think the option is A because the the forces are large and the molecules are allowed to move throughout the liquid. The option is uh, question number sixteen. Option is A. Question number seventeen. To raise the temperature of a, a two kg block of metal by twenty degrees centigrade, energy of five point two kilojoules is needed. What is the value of the specific heat capacity of the metal? You know, whenever the temperature changes of a body, and we have a formula, and that formula is heat is equals to m c delta theta. And uh, where heat is equal, heat is heat. It is given here, 5.2 kilojoules, and M stands for the mass, and the C stands for the specific heat capacity, and the uh, delta theta stands for the change in temperature. So heat is equals to M C delta theta. You know, here the value of the heat is given, the value of the change in temperature is given, the value of the mass of the block is given. They are interested in the value of the specific heat capacity, which is small c in that formula. So, if you write the formula in your copy, heat is equals to m c delta theta. Then the heat will be equals to uh, sorry, heat. Uh, keep that, uh, make that c subject of the formula. I mean, make the c alone on one side of the formula. Bring the other two things on downstairs here uh, under the heat. So, c will be equals to heat divided by Mass and uh, change in temperature. So, just take the calculator. So, you see, heat is five point two kilo kilojoules. So, convert that kilojoules into joules. And five point two multi sorry five point two multiply one thousand. Why I'm doing this? I'm converting the kilojoules into the joules. So, it will be five two zero zero joules. 5200 joules and divided by mass that's 2 kg equals to divided by change in temperature that's 20 and equals to so my answer is 130 so the answer the option is c 17 is the c option 130 joules per kg per degree centigrade i hope you understand the formula i used is heat equals to m c delta theta heat equals to mass multiply specific heat capacity multiply change in temperature and the c value was to be found okay on your screen question number 18 okay question 18 says what makes a clinical thermometer suitable for making small changes in the body temperature uh, the amount of mercury in the bulb is small. No, that will make it insensitive. The bore of the capillary tube is narrow. Yes, that makes the, the clinical thermometer, when the capillary tube, the bore of the capillary tube is narrow, the thermometer becomes very sensitive. And when it becomes sensitive, it shows a large expansion in the mercury uh, for a small change in the temperature. So you are able to measure even a very small, a very minute change in the temperature. Uh, so this thing makes it more sensitive. So B looks the answer. 18 B is the answer. The capillary tube is long. That's not right. The glass bulb has a thin wall. That's not right. Okay. The next question on your screen is question number 19. He says substances can change from one state to another as shown. So he has shown melting, boiling, condens condensing, freezing in the diagram. For substances to change from one state to another, there must be some energy transfer. Which change involves the substance taking in energy and which changes involve the substance giving out energy? Okay, so let's reduce its size a little bit. Yeah, now you can see. <clears throat> Melting requires energy. It absorbs energy. Boiling also, uh, bo boiling also absorbs energy. Energy is taken in. In one and two, 
and con con when, when when something condenses it gives out energy and when something freezes also gives out energy so i think the option is a question number 19 the option is a it's very simple question papa is it kya dekha question number now you can see we have question number 20 on your screen okay how do the speed and the wavelength of a red light in air compares with the speed and the wavelength of a violet light in air okay he's talking about the speed speed red light blue light green light whatever light they all have the same speed in the air so the the speed of the red light and the violet light will be same and what about the wavelength the order of the increasing uh, wavelength is we have a code word we have set a code for this we call it roy g wiv so red roy red o orange y yellow roy g wiv so while it is at the end so so for the wavelength sorry i said increasing this is decreasing uh, wavelength sorry i said increasing wavelength the order is decreasing uh, wavelength matlab the red has more wavelength as compared to the violet the code word is roy r o y g g biv b i v i v roy g biv that's the code we have uh, keep in mind to remember these things okay uh is 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 a tough one question number 21 on screen a ray of light enters a glass block at an angle of incidence i producing an angle of refraction r in the glass and this question is several different values of i and r are measured and a graph is drawn of sin i against sin r which graph is correct okay you see this graph here he has shown you four graphs and all these four graphs are uh, between the sin i value and the sin r value the sin r is represented on the x axis and the sin i value is represented on the y axis you know if i will take the slope of this graph the slope will be change in its y divided by change in y x uh, in other words in mathematical forms we say the change in the y divided by change in the x that is called the slope and the slope of this will be it will be sin i by sin r because on the y axis sin i is represented so change in the y we call also call it rise rise by run that is slope and here the rise by run will be sin i by sin r that will be equals to the refractive index of the glass refractive index of the glass value is more than 1 and is positive so from these graphs you have to choose that one whose slope is positive because the refractive index of the glass is positive so b and c cannot be the choices because their slopes are negative so the only competition is between the a choice and the d choice another thing the slope of the sorry the refractive index of the glass is more than 1 it's something like 1.3 1.1.3 1.4 so i have to choose that graph whose uh, slope is positive and whose gradient is more than 1 if you take a point here for example i take a point here take this point 0, 0 and take this point its x value will be something like 0.6 and its y value will be 1 so how much is the rise here 1 and how much is the run here 0.6 if you divide 1 with the 0.6 you will get an answer 1 point something okay look at this graph the d1 if i take this point and this point 0, 0 this point is 1, 0.6 ha huh? so the rise here is 0.6 and the run here is 1 so divide the rise with the run that is 0.6 divided by 1 that is 0.6 which is less than 1 so d cannot be the option the correct option is a because its slope is positive its slope is uh, more than 1 and obviously the slope representing here is uh, refractive index and the refractive index of the glass is 1 point something okay so a is the choice it was this was a difficult one
Okay, on your screen, you see we have, uh, uh, we have here, he says, a, a boy stands, let me increase the size. He says, a boy stands, uh, a boy stands beside a girl in front of a large plane mirror. They are both in, the, they are both the same distance from the mirror as shown. Why does the boy see the, where does the boy see the girl's image? Okay. So to create the girl's image, we draw a line from here straight to the mirror and behind the mirror we take it. And then we say, here's the girl, here's the boy. And you see what is the center point between them. You bring it here, draw a line here and reflect it and bring it to the boy. Then this reflected ray, prolong it behind, produce it behind. Okay, so this line which I draw perpendicular to the mirror and this reflected ray, when I produce it behind the mirror, they both intersect at point A. So the boy will see the image of girl on the position A. I have not drawn the lines here, but I, as I told you, if you draw the line and if you if you're working on a paper, actually draw, draw those lines there and you will get the right position for the image. So next question is question number 23 on your screen. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> a student uh, that was 22. Question number 23. A student uses a spring to demonstrate waves which he moves the spring with his hand. Spring placed on bench, which diagram demonstrates the type of wave produced by a source of sound? Source of sound produces uh, longitudinal waves. In the longitudinal waves, we have compressions and rarefactions. Compressions are where the coils will be close to each other, and the rarefactions are where the coils will be away from each other. So I think clearly the B is the option. Okay, the question number 24, let's reduce it a little bit. Question number 24, it says, the diagram shows the main sections of the electromagnetic spectrum in order of increasing frequency. Some of the sections are labeled. The section R has a frequency just below that of the light. Light means visible light. Which application uses the, uh, you know, if you remember that code we have, uh, we have, Devise the code. Ronald McDonald is very ugly except Gary. So Ronald McDonald, very, very means visible light, which is represented here as light. Before that comes, Ronald McDonald is very ugly. Visible light, before the visible light comes the infrared. So R is representing the infrared. So the very famous application of infrared radiation uh, is in the television remote controllers. For 24 the option is D. Okay, we are moving to the next question. Question number 25 on your screen. Here, I believe. The diagram shows an alarm system. Okay. What happens when the battery P is disconnected? Okay, you see, if you see this, here we have two circuits. Like this, the upper circuit and this lower circuit. In this upper circuit, you can see we have this uh, solenoid and it's connected with this battery. This is iron core inside that solenoid. So what happens when the current, DC current is flowing through it, it will become an electromagnet due to this electromagnet. Magnet, this iron armature will be attracted upward due to this electromagnet. This iron armature will remain in the air, lifted like, like shown here. But if you disconnected the battery P, so what will happen? This will lose its electromagnetism. The iron armature, due to the weight of the iron armature, it will drop. And when it will, it will drop, it will touch this place. When it will touch this place, this lower circuit will be completed. When this lower circuit will be completed, the bell will start ringing. So what will happen, G? The options are the iron armature will fall and the bell will ring. I think the option is A. So the 25, the option is A. Okay, on your screen, we have question number 26 now. 
Waveforms are shown on a cathode ray oscilloscope for a flute and for a guitar, each playing the same note. The oscilloscope settings are the same for both waves. What is the difference between the two sounds? They, they appear to have the same uh, frequency. They appear to have the same amplitude. The only difference is the basic, the shape of the basic wave is different from each other. That's why we will say uh, they have the differences of the quality timber. Question number 26, the option is C. Okay, the question number 27 on your screen right now. Two matter spheres X and Y are on insulating basis. Both spheres are negatively charged. Sphere X is moved towards sphere Y until they almost touch. Which diagram shows the final pattern of charges? When they, they both are negative. Oh, the two matter spheres X and Y are, are on insulating basis. Both spheres are negatively charged. Sphere X is moved towards sphere Y until they almost touch. Which diagram shows the final pattern of the charges? You see, they both have negative charge, and the negative charges will repel each other. So when you try to touch them, or when you try to bring them, uh, he, says, he does not say uh, touch them. He says almost touch. Remember, actually, they are not touching. They are very close to each other. So negative and negatives will be repelling. So the negative of the left uh, sphere will move to the left corner and the negatives of the... Um, they will move to the right, okay? So for the 27th, the option is C. These extra negative charges, they will move on the sides because they are metallic spheres, so the bodies, and the extra electrons can move throughout the body. So they will move away. So C is the choice. Question number 28. He says the resistance of a uh, cylindrical wire P is 80 ohm. A second wire Q is made of the from the same material. The cross-sectional area of the Q is four times that of the P. The length of the Q is twice the charge. So what is the resistance of Q? Okay, it's very simple. You see, it's the resistance of the P is 80. The Q's cross-sectional area is four times. So the resistance will decrease by four times. I mean, you divide it with four. 80 divided by four, you will get 20. But the length becomes twice. If the length becomes twice, the resistance will also become twice. So 20 multiplied to 40. So the um, option will be B, 40. 28, the option will be B. I hope. I am clear on this because the cross-sectional area, when you make it four times, the resistance will decrease. The resistance will become one fourth. So 180 divided by four, 20. And the length was doubled. So the resistance will become double. So 20 multiplied to 40. So that is how I got the answer. I did not do the calculation. The calculations are done mentally. Okay, the question number 29 on your screen, a lamp. He uh, says, let me reduce his size a little bit. Yeah. A lamp designed to work at 1.5 volt is connected to a cell of electromotive force. 1.5 volt, the lamp lights at normal brightness. The lamp is now connected to four similar, similar cells, each of EM of 1.5 volt, arranged in parallel. Uh, what is the effect of connecting the extra cell in this way? You see, when you connect the EM of sources in parallel to each other, the EMF do not increase, but it has a big advantage. If one of them will die, it will run out. The, the rest of them will be still providing the EMF. And the life of the, obviously the light of the lamp can be lit for longer because the source will run longer. He says the lamp, what is the fact of connecting the extra cells in this way? The lamp burns out? No. The lamp is dimmer? No. The lamp produces light for a longer time? Yes. The lamp produces light for a short time? No. C is the option. For 29, C is the option. Question number uh, 30 on your screen. Let's increase the size we can. Okay. Okay. He says, the current in the filament lamp is 0 0.25 ampere. 
when working normally the lamp is connected to a plug and the and the main supply main ac supply when the lamp is switched on it does not light what is the possible cause for this what is the possible is the first one the earth wire in the plug is not connected no 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 earth wire connected not connected does not make any difference the fuse in the plug is 3 ampere that does not make difference if the 3 ampere fuse is plugged in and the fuse is connected it makes uh, it makes no difference the lamp only works on a dc power supply that's wrong a live wire a live wire in the plug is not connected yeah, that can be the reason if the live wire is not connected then uh, that if the live wire is connect is not connected then the lamp is not lighting so 30 for 30 the d d is the option sir p okay the next one next question is 31 which appliance used on a 240 volt supply is most likely to burn out its fuse okay the voltage is given for the 240 and in the option if you go the powers of the each is given so for everyone calculate the amount of current let's say for the a option the power given is 100 watt and the voltage you apply is 240 volt so you know power formula p is equals to iv P equal I V. Let's calculate the value of I. I will be P divided by V. Power divided by voltage. So 100 divided by 240. My answer is 0.416. Uh, so, so it will take a current of 0.42 ampere, and the fuse you put there is one ampere, so it's good. There will be no problem. the next b is 1 uh, kilowatt 1 kilowatt what means 1000 watt so 1000 divided by 240 the current value is 4.2 4.2 ampere current this thing will take and you have put a fuse there of 5 ampere so it's good no problem the c option 2 kilowatts 2 kilowatts mean 2000 watts so 2000 divided by 240 the op- the answer is 8.3 ah uh, it will take a current of 8.3 ampere but you put a fuse there of the rating of uh, 3 amperes so this fuse will not work immediately it will burst so his his question was which which is most likely to burn this one c c question number 31 c is the option sir uh, okay next question On your screen, the question number is thirty-two. The diagram shows a potential divider system of two resistors connected to a six-volt power supply. What is reading on the voltmeter? If you, this is a potential divider. If you remember, if you remember that formula, V out for a potential divider, V out is equals to R two multiply voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance. R2 multiply voltage of the battery divided by in the denominator we say R1 plus R2 if you remember that books formula and the formula given in your book I mean so here uh, R2 is 10,000 multiply it with the voltage of the battery that six divided with the total resistance here the total resistance is 12,000. The answer is five, so the choice is D, thirty-two D choice. That's right, Jim. Okay, next question. A little bit smaller. Okay, question number thirty-three is on your screen. In the circuit shown, the alarm bell will only start ringing, ringing sometimes after the switch is closed. What causes the time delay? Here we, you know, in in here. we have connected a capacitor so when you close this switch the current will not flow through the bell the current will first come here and it will start charging the capacitor once the capacitor is fully charged then the bell will ring that's why we say the why the capacitors are used capacitors are 
used to store the electric energy and in our course we say the capacitors are also used to time delay so when you close the switch the ring the bell will not ring immediately the bell will take some time and then it will ring so when you close the switch first the capacitor will charge and once it's charged then the bell will ring so what causes the time delay because the capacitor is charging for 33 the option is a the capacitor was charging that's why the current is not flowing through the bell okay the question number 34 i believe two parallel here you see two parallel wires carry currents in the same direction which diagram shows the magnetic field around each wire and the direction of the force on each if you have two parallel if you have two parallel wires and their current flowing through them is in the same direction the par parallel wires wires will attract each other remember this thing they will not repel they will attract if you have two parallel wires and the current flowing through them is in the same direction they will attract each other so either it's a or it's b it cannot be c it cannot be d okay now now we will decide on the basis of uh, out of a and b we will decide with the right hand rule the we can find out the direction of the magnetic lines around a straight conductor so if you use your right hand rule uh, and look at a okay in a the magnetic using the right hand rule hold the uh, straight conductor in your right hand such in such a way that your thumb is in the direction of the current then the curves of your finger will be showing the direction of the magnetic field the a's magnetic fields are correctly uh, directed but in b uh, the magnetic fields around those straight conductors are in the wrong direction so for the 34 the option the correct option is a okay the next question he says the diagram shows the three electrical devices x y and z which device provides an alternating ac output you see uh, this is a generator and the generator will provide alternating current so x will provide alternating current this is not the diagram of uh, this y is not the diagram of a generator it is the diagram of a motor so it do not produce uh, alternating it do not produce emf here this is a dynamo dynamo also produces alternating current so x and z the both devices are generators so they produce alternating current x and z the option looks 35 the option is d okay the next question in our screen is question number 36 Question number 36 on our screen is, he says, one component of a simple DC motor is a split ring commutator. Which metal is used to make the commutator and why is this metal chosen? Commutator will be made of the copper because it provides the, commutator always provides the connection of the electricity. And uh, it's a good conductor of electricity, that's why. So 36 will have A option, yes, ma'am. Question number 36. Let's reduce his size a little bit. Okay, he says a small coil is connected to a galvano. A small coil is connected to a galvanometer G as shown. And uh, when a magnet is allowed to fall towards the coil, the galvanometer pointer gives a momentary deflection to the right of the zero position. The magnet moves through the coil. What happens to the galvanometer point as the magnet falls away from the coil? And away from the coil. So what will happen? It will give the reading in the opposite direction. So first it was deflected to the right side. Now it will be deflected to the left side. It gives a momentary deflection to the, you see, to the left side. I think the B, for 37, the B is the option, yes, sir. The B is the option. And next is 38. For 38, let me increase the size. We can increase the size. Question number 38. 
it says uh, one isotope of carbon is uh, carbon 614 how many neutrons and proton mm -hmm. does this lower number that is proton number which is 6 so number of protons are 6 number of neutrons 14 minus 6 so 14 minus 6 will be 8 so number of neutrons are 8 and the number of protons are 6 so for 38 the option is c Question number 39. The isotope barium-140 has a half-life of 13 days. A sample of this isotope is kept for 13 days. Which quantity halves during this time? Isotope of barium-140 has a half-life of 13 days. A sample of this isotope is kept for 13 days. During the half-life, half of its original atoms, original atoms will decay. Which quantity have during this time? The number of atoms of the barium-140, yes, that will become half. The number of electrons, no. The number of neutron nucleons, no. Number of protons, no. Okay, A is the option. The number of atoms of barium-140, they will decay. Half of them will be gone. So A, the number of atoms of the barium. So A is the option. Question number 39, A is the option. Question number 40, part D. In a laboratory experiment, experiment particles from a radioactive source are deviated by a magnetic field and reaches a detector okay so here is the source of the radioactivity radiation is coming and due to the magnetic field which is into the page into the screen and the radiation is deflected and the detector is here which particles are deviated and reach the detector okay so we have to apply the left hand rule you see uh f if you have left hand rule you know f m c f m c if you stretch the fingers of these three fingers of your left hand in such a way that they are mutually perpendicular to each other the thumb is the force in the direction in which the deflection will take place and m magnetic field and this is c the charge in which direction the charge body is moving so the charge body was coming this way, the magnetic field was into the page, the magnetic field was into the page, the charge body was going down, my thumb points in this way. So if that radiation was positively charged, it would have moved to the right side of the screen. But it has not on your screen or on your page, you see, it has moved to the other side. It has moved to the opposite side, to the whatever the side my thumb is telling me by the left hand rule, the radiation deflected opposite. So it shows that the radiation is not positively charged. If the radiation is not positively charged, it must be a beta particle. Okay. So it is a beta particle. So, and it's beta particle only. Gamma rays will not be deflected in the magnetic field. Okay. So D is the option, only the beta particles. I hope uh, I am very clear and uh, you have under understood today's paper. Uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good day.